Hello, everybody. This is Hondo Carpenter from Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. It is great to be with you today. Thank you for sharing part of your day with me. Um, have an article coming that I want to discuss with you today. It's a written article of a conversation that I recently had with the Las Vegas Raiders interim general manager, uh, the great champ Kelly. And I want to talk to you about it <clears throat> in this podcast today, because I think it's very important and imperative for you to understand why I did it, how I did it, because I want you to be able to assimilate the information. When Mike Mayock was relieved of his duties as general manager by um, Mark Davis, I quickly wrote a list of qualified candidates that I was hearing from around the NFL that could replace him. One of the names on that list uh, was Champ Kelly that I reported very quickly. And a lot of people don't didn't necessarily know who Champ was at the time. They do now in Raider Nation. But it was an interesting pick. So early this season, very early this season, um, I uh, saw Champ and we visited for a little bit and I told him, I would like to do an interview with you, not really about the Raiders, but about you, your style. How do you do things? What's the way that you operate? And uh, he was amenable to it and was like, yeah, sure. So we set on doing it during the bye week. And then bye week, obviously, by the time the bye week got here, he was then sitting in the GM's chair. So we did the interview last Friday, uh, literally in the morning, right after the the victory, the historic victory over the Chargers. Um, and it was an interesting interview for a lot of reasons. I didn't really want the interview to be about the Raiders. I realize for some of you, you would just want content that, that's Raider only, but I, I wanted to be to see a macro picture, not micro. I wanted to be able to really introduce you to the guy that's so respected around the National Football League. The general train of thought is that it's not a matter of if he's going to get a general manager's job. It's a matter of when and whether or not that's going to be the Raiders. Um, the Raiders didn't tell me there's no questions you can't ask him. Uh, he didn't tell me there's no questions you can't ask me. Um, I wouldn't do an interview in that setting, but I was very forthright. And these are the questions I want to ask. I, I wanted people, you especially, to get to know him. I've shared this story ad nauseum, and I know that sometimes hearing a story repetitively bothers people, but I think it's very, very important. Years ago, I'm sitting down with my good friend, Matt Millen, on my television show at the time, and interviewing him. And he makes the comment at all of the NFL football teams, the fans think they're part of the team. But what makes the Raiders different is that the Raiders players think the fans are part of the team. Um, at the Chargers game, my buddy Harry Ruiz, the Spanish broadcaster for the Raiders, took me out to Lot J to the tailgating. And I got to meet so many amazing, amazing Raider fans. It was really an eye-opening experience. It was, it was just, there were um, these tailgates, and it was really like one big one. And matter of fact, I met one guy, there were three tailgates next to each other, and they just all rotate each week who brings the main dish. It was, it was, a, it was eye-opening for me. Um, I've been to a ton of great college tailgates where it's almost like everyone tries to outdo everyone. Um, it's almost like a fashion show sometimes. Um, great experiences, but it's just, it's almost a competition. The entire lot, Jay, and everybody had different foods and everybody had all the different stuff, but it was 
we're all one. People were walking over to someone else's and trying this sausage or walking over to this one and trying this and and eating this. And people were trying to give everybody drinks and food and, and water. And it was just, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced at not only at a professional level, but even at a collegiate level, it was, it was very, very unique. Um, the only place that I would compare tailgating to the Raiders was at Green Bay. At Green Bay, they're that way too. It, very familial, very um, everybody. Now, I'll tell you again something that surprised me at the Raiders tailgate is there were Charger fans down there. And yeah, people were yelling Raiders and having fun with them. But I didn't see one person that went too far. It was fun. And you saw Charger fans tailgating with um, there wasn't a lot of them, but there were some of them tailgating with Raider fans. Um, it was just a very unique experience. And what stood out to me, there were many things, but what really stood out to me was everybody had a story. We met a guy named Cap uh, Uncle Jack who had tattoos all over his body, but they were a story. Each one, it, it was really unique just listening to him tell his story with his tats. It was really cool. I mean, this is a man, I'm going to guess he's in his 70s. And uh, But what the Raiders meant to him, it was just so incredible. We met one family. There's a grandpa, a son, and a grandson, three generations. I thought that was really cool. Um just listening to people's stories of what the Raiders mean to them. Uh, met a guy who uh, grew up a Raider fan, but he'd gotten in trouble and went to jail. And in jail, he was just briefly, it was a very brief conversation, but he talked about, you know, in jail, it's divided and there are gangs and everything. But then there's also, you may be a member of a gang, but you're a Raider fan and somebody else is a Raider fan. And how the counselor, use the Raiders to change his life. And don't you want to go to a game? And he was just a young kid and he's now an adult. I, I apologize. I don't remember a name. I don't remember. I met so many people. It's hard to remember everybody's name. And I am sorry about that. I'm going to be back out uh, before the Broncos game and try to meet some more of you, but I apologize about that. But it was the Raiders weren't, it's more than just, fandom of a football team and if you are a new Raider fan and you don't understand that I didn't either so don't feel bad I didn't was not raised a Raider fan I, I, I cover them now I root for good people and I'm gonna tell you I've really yet to meet anybody in, that works for the organization or anybody in the fan base that's not a good person that's not good people but it's just a different way and so the purpose of this interview with Champ was for you to get to know him. Okay, he is um, known as extremely competitive. Well, most people don't know he played at Kentucky, and then but he was a player that played various positions. So I use that by saying to him, you know, clearly a quarterback's a quarterback, but. You were a versatile player. You played in non-NFL professional leagues. How important is it for you if a player is not a specific position-only guy for them to be versatile? I think that tells you a lot about how he's going to draft. Um, I talked about how important is it to be scouting these non-NFL professional leagues. I mean, we have the proliferation, USFL, XFL, can, you know, there's Canada, there's indoor there's small schools big schools and college what's your philosophy on that now see that is raider centric but it's not raider it's letting you into his mind what does he think how does he see running an operation you know he's extremely competitive very very competitive and so we dug in where does that come from 
everything makes something. I'll give you a quick example. Growing up as a boy, I ate squash all the time. It was part of a Midwest thing. In the Midwest, you just eat a lot of squash. Well, I ate such massive quantities of squash as a kid that it got to the point where, okay, I can't have any more of this. So if you ask me, why do I hate squash? It's not that I, I, I hate squash. I just ate so much as a kid. I'm not interested in it. Okay. I love to hunt and fish poured into me by my father, by his father poured it into him and his grandfather poured it into him. And that's our family. I mean, I've got cousins, distant cousins that we still are in contact, you know, third cousins. Why? Because we hunted together as kids still. That's it. That, that's just who we are. And so if someone says, I don't like hunting. Okay. Why do you, you can go back and find out the heritage in my family. So it, I wanted you to be able to go behind and get to know the guy. I know. Um, I really like champ. I think he's super competitive, which gives him a huge advantage to some guys. This is a job to champ. It's about winning. And to some guys, it's about, okay, I've arrived. I don't want to take any risks. It's not champ. He's not going to play it safe. And I've heard a lot of people say, well, he's going to get a job. And then he's going to try to play not to lose. No, that's not champ. It's not him at all. So I wanted you to go back to learn what forged that in him. A lot of people are not aware, but he was, you know, with the Broncos and very successful with the Broncos. When Peyton Manning was there and Mike Shanahan and those guys really impacted him, Elvis Dumerville. And we go back and, you know, what did you learn there? And then he goes to the Bears. And, of course, everybody knows the Bears had a deal for Khalil Mack. And we, we really talk about what did you learn from the Bears? Who were your influences there? What were some things that really – um, spoke to you? What were some things that really shaped and formed who you are? And that's important for a lot of reasons. Because when you know what shapes somebody, when you know what drives somebody, when you know what matters to somebody, then you can get things in perspective. I have a friend who's a journalist and him and I see life really differently. And so one day we just went to lunch and I took him to lunch and I said, um, you know, I really like you. You're a good guy. Tell me why you feel X, Y, Z, P, D, and Q. And he was, and, and thankfully he was very warm and very much poured his heart out to me. Now, I, I feel genuinely close to him. I respect him. Uh, we disagree. We're at polar opposites on a lot of issues. But I really respect him because I took time to get to know him. And I think sometimes in, in pro sports, guys get GM jobs or guys get coaching jobs. But if you don't understand the way they are, all right, let's go to AP. You know, He's from California, grew up a Raider guy, super competitive. He had to make the decision. Do I go one way, which is going to lead to a lot of trouble, which he's admitted, you know, some people in his life have gone that way. Or do I embrace football? And he does, and he attacks football the way he attacks sports. I think that is a fundamental blessing for AP. I think it's helped make him into a good coach. Is that he attacks football. He saw football as something. It wasn't just a game for him. It was almost a life raft. Those are my words, not his. And so I wanted you to know in this interview, and if, if it's before 9 a.m. Pacific and 12 Eastern to, when you're watching this, it publishes at noon, Eastern, 9 Pacific. Uh, what, how the interview goes about. And if it's after, make sure you go watch it. I mean, go, excuse me, go read it. But I wanted you to be able to see it and to get to know him. I said earlier, and I'll say it again. It is not a matter of 
if Champ Kelly is going to run an NFL franchise. It's a matter of when. Now, I'm rooting for him. I want him to get the job with the Raiders. He's a good guy. I think he's a very smart football man. I think he fits the culture. You know, you one of the things that you need to know uh, that a lot of fans don't process, and it's not because they're dumb. I'm not implying that. But it's because they're not there every day. Is It's one thing to say, well, that guy was a great player. He'll be a great coach. That doesn't mean that at all. Look at Irvin Magic Johnson, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Horrible coach. And he struggled with coaching because not everyone had his commitment to practice. And it was very difficult for him. Or they'll say, hey, this guy did this here. Let's go get him. How many times do you see an offensive coordinator get hired? You know, Frank Smith, the offensive coordinator at Miami, used to be here with John Gruden. And a lot of people are like, well, let's go get Frank Smith. Okay, that may be a good hire. I don't know if Frank Smith will be a good or bad hire. But I do know you're not getting the Miami offense because that's McDaniels' offense. And and like Eric Bieniemy when he was with Kansas City, Andy Reid calls that. Or Mick Lombardi when he's here with Josh McDaniels. So it's not just let's go get somebody who's been around it. You got to get somebody who understands the proliferation of it. Somebody that understands how it works. Somebody who understands the ins and outs. You know, you can go get somebody who's hyper competitive, but doesn't know how to get along with people. That's not going to work with an AP. And it's not going to work with a Mark Davis. I think that Champ Kelly is the right mix of personality. I think he is the right mix of drive. I think, he, I'm sorry, I got a cold. He's in the right mix of drive. He's the right mix of being able to work with people. Uh, I heard it said one time, and I really thought this was good. Um, and I, I think it was Mike Holmgren who told me this. But if I'm wrong, I apologize. But I thought it was at the Super Bowl in Detroit he told me this. Again, if it wasn't Mike, it was someone at that Super Bowl. But I do believe it was Mike. That a general, and you may remember, Mike was general manager, coach, but the general manager is kind of like a link in the chain between the coach and the owner, and they've got to be flexible because you, you're 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 being that guy, champs that he knows how to process what the coach needs, keep in mind the vision of the owner, as well as where he's steering the ship. It takes a very unique personality to be a general manager. There are some general managers that are very strong-willed, and it works. It works. They may have an owner who's a little bit more passive, or they may have a coach. Not When I say passive, I don't mean weak, but they're willing to, okay, you give me the tools, tell me what to make, and I'll make dinner. Then there's the Bill Parcells. If you want me to make dinner, I'm going to buy my own groceries. And I just think where the Raiders are, Champ fits personality-wise. Number two, he's well-respected around the league. You say, why is that important? Because when he picks up the phone, you need other teams to take his call. I know of general managers before that teams just wouldn't talk to him. I uh, No names. I know a GM watched every time he did a trade, there was this article of how Oh, man, he just beat the other team up. Well, he would go to media and say, man, I really took them to town because he wanted to make himself look good. Well, just got to the point where no one wanted to deal with him anymore. Nobody wanted to. And Champ's not that guy. He picks up the phone. Every team's going to listen. Every team is going to listen. Then there are some people who will listen, but nah, don't really want to do a deal with you. Believe it or not, I know this is hard for a lot of fans to believe, but there are a lot of deals that don't get done just because people don't like each other. Even then, they're beneficial for both teams. I know that sounds ridiculously stupid, but I trust me, it's real. Champ's able to do that. He not only picks up, he picks up the phone and they answer, he picks up the phone and they listen. 
People respect him. He's respected. That's a big deal for the Raiders. The other one is, is he's a very keen eye for talent. Anybody can pick a Peyton Manning, Khalil Mack, a, you know, a player that's great and say, boy, well, we want to get him. But good general managers make their living on the second half of the roster. In fact, I was told once that a great general manager keeps his job by what he does after guy 20 on the roster. 20 to 53. And then, of course, the practice squad and everything else. You know, Jack Jones is here because Champ listened. He listened. Brought up. Okay, these may be some concerns that come with that player. And the coach is able to say, yeah, but X, Y, Z, P, D, and Q. Okay, let's execute it. Let's go. He listens. That's terribly important. You know, in a sport that's predicated on communication, you'd be shocked at how few people actually communicate. You know, I, I make this statement all the time. Our world has never been more connected but I don't know in, in my 52 years on this planet that there's ever been less communication. That's sad. And, and Champ offers all that. Competitive, gets along with people, but he's a keen evaluator of talent. He's super good. He knows how to build a staff, his own staff. He knows how to let them know this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. This is what's important to me. And he knows how to make it happen. So in this interview, that's the approach I take with Champ Kelly. I wanted to give you the chance to know him, to understand him. I would really encourage you to take the time to watch it, to understand it, to really get to know him. I think after... Uh, I mean, to read it, excuse me, I think after reading it, I think you're going to say, yeah, this is the kind of guy I want leading my franchise. This is a guy that's committed to certain things. What's important to him? Okay. Faith and family and football. Those are his three F's. Faith first, family second. He's a great father and husband, but then football. And he fits the need. Again, None of us knows if he's going to be the next Raiders general manager. I think he should be. But if it's not here, it's going to be somewhere else. And I think it's important for the NFL fans and Raider Nation to get to know who he is. So I just want to thank you for taking some time today. I wanted to explain. I think you deserve that. Why I did the interview the way that I did. Um, because I care about him. And, and I, I, I care about you. And I think that Raider Nation and him is a really good marriage. And I think it was important for you to understand my thinking process and then to, to show it to you on why I did it. So from all of us here at Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, part of the Fans First Sports Network, thanks for joining us. Merry Christmas to all of you. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at Hondo Carpenter at H-O-N-D-O-C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R. And on Instagram at Hondo SR, Hondo SR. Also, one other quick thing. If you don't want to watch the video of our podcast every day, you can listen to the audio on Spotify or on Apple. Additionally, I do a second podcast every day. It's usually five to 10 minutes called Riding with Hondo and Dexter. It's usually when Dexter and I are in the car. Um, if I get off the phone with a player or an NFL executive, or maybe I just walked out of practice but if I get tidbits or something that sticks out to me, I just do a quick five to 10 minute audio only podcast that I think you'll really enjoy as well. You can check those out there. So from all of us here at Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, part of the Fans First Sports Network. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Merry Christmas. Again, the article will publish at 9 Pacific, 12 Eastern. If it's before then, please make sure you check it out. But if not, go read it and enjoy it. Love to hear from you. Thank you all so much. Appreciate you greatly. Have a good day.